everybody. I'm going to start the meeting, 403. Uh, I'm Bob Anderson, I'm the chairman on the Board of Appeals, and as you can see by the names of everybody else who's on the board here, we have two alternates with us. Uh, the alternates are allowed to speak and ask questions, but they're not allowed to vote. We have a quorum of five members, regular members here, so we're all set there with a quorum. Okay. And uh, who's Michelle? Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know which one was Michelle. Uh, <clears throat> so how we're going to do this is we're going to call it, well, we'll call the meeting. <coughs> All the members have been sworn in and uh, the minutes have been accepted from the last meeting there. So that's on, on the record there. And we have the four members, uh, five members, it's a full form. And what we got to find out first from, from Michelle is uh, do we have jurisdiction on this? And I'm looking at the application that Michelle sent in. And I'm just going to read the bottom like if that's what you filled in over here for those who never got the uh, application. It says uh, permit number 18 slash 1939 was issued in violation of town of acting zoning, zoning ordinances. It's our understanding that Mr. Sweeney has with 11.318 to complete modifications at his property as the code requires appeals to be made within 30 days after the decision. We are filing within the 30 days to reserve the right to make any changes in addition to the appeal within 30 days of 11.318. That is on the appeal. Uh, so what we're basically doing on this Board of Appeal is we're going into uh, issuing this permit that I mentioned, 18 slash 1939, if it was proper or not proper. So that's what the meeting is about. Is that right, Michelle? Yes. I can see it with a lot of my class. I can't think of which. Uh, so that's what the meeting is about. If it's an appeal on his issuing a permit, then it's within our jurisdiction to go over and see uh, if it was issued properly or not. Okay? Um, the owner of the property can speak if they want. We'll listen to the complainants first, neighbors and all that, what they have to say. Uh, the owner can say something, but it really doesn't pertain to them as much as Ken Paul and his issuing of that ordinance. Okay? Um, we're limiting it to the issue of that permits only. We're not going to get sidetracked or going to other things that doesn't pertain to the Board of Appeals. Okay? And we will let uh, you hear from you first, then. and then any neighbors that want to speak can speak after that. Um, I'm Lisa Gilbert. I'm an attorney. I represent um, Michelle and the other um, landowners at the, um, at the property at 791 13th Street. Um, I'm at the law firm of Pierce Atwood in Portland. Um, and I'm going to speak on Michelle's behalf today, if that's okay with the board. Um, and then uh, after I've spoken, um, I know a number of neighbors, other neighbors have come to speak with you uh, to also today, so I'd like mm -hmm. them to speak as well. Um, I was told to bring copies of our materials, so that's, that's why we have a, quite a stack here. Um, so these are the materials that we'd like for you to consider today. <coughs> <clears throat> like I said, we're, we're strictly pertaining to that audience, so we try not to get sidetracked and get into other subjects that have nothing to do with the Board of Appeals. Absolutely. Everything yep. in that packet is strictly pertaining to the permit that was issued mm -hmm. and the relevant ordinance, uh, ordinance provisions that were violated in the issuance of that permit. Okay. So um, what you have in your packet, and I'll go through this um, as I speak, but it's um, very broadly um, um, our appeal that was submitted to you, which we did supplement on November 9th and November 16th because we didn't even receive a copy of the permit until November. Um, so we, once we received a copy of the permit after filing a Freedom of Access Act request with the town, um, which is also in there, we, we, um, we knew what was in the permit, so we had better grounds to, um, to appeal it. So mm -hmm. our um, appeal is in there. Um, um, evidence of the commercial use of the property, evidence of setback violations, and evidence of um, nuisance violations, um, all of which result from the issuance of the permit. Very big picture. Um, the bottom line here is that the um, the permit 
allows two structures on the property in violation of the setbacks, which house livestock, also in violation of the ordinance. Um, we're talking about a third of an acre property in a residential neighborhood on which the homeowner is keeping um, over a dozen goats um, and some chickens as well. Well, goats are lovely animals. They're very cute. Um, they are noisy. They, um, they produce a lot of odor. They produce an enormous amount of waste. Um, and the town and the state has taken very special care to um, create zones that allow certain uses to um, protect neighbors and to protect the water of the great state of Maine. Um, and we feel that um, in issuing the permit to allow this use and allow these structures, the code enforcement officer has um, violated those state and local provisions. Now, um, in your packet, um, you will see first um, our appeal. which is our application and our supplements, as well as some photographs of manure piles right on the edge of the property. Um, I urge you all to read all of our materials as a part of the record. Um, next, you'll find our request for information which we had to file with the town to get the permit, which is why we supplemented our appeal. And then you get to the notice of violation. The notice of violation was issued on the, the homeowner on September 9th, 2018, um, because the homeowner was um, operating a commercial agricultural operation on the property. Um, it's unlawful in this shoreland district. Um, the, the notice of violation explicitly points out the definition of agriculture and tells them to cease all commercial operations. Um, the evidence shows that commercial operations have been going on there for a number of years. Um, they continue to go on there and there's no evidence that they will stop in the future. Sorry, do you have a question? Uh, yes, I just wanted to curtail it to the setback of these uh, these sheds. Everything else doesn't pertain to the Board of Appeals. In other words, we're appealing the fact that you're, you're complaining about two sheds that were built, and that's what we need to know setback-wise or what the violations are right. on that. That's, that's what I'm telling you. So if you look at the permit, <clears throat> the permit that was issued, is for a four by six shed and a ten by four shed. Beg your pardon? A four by six shed and a ten by fourteen shed. Sorry, did I didn't speak. No, no, no. no. We, have we have a copy of the permit. The permit is for one shed, not two. It's four, for four one shed. One shed. That's the application. That's the application. This is the permit. The application has two. There are two applications. There's an application for one four by six shed with a drawing. There's an application for one 10 by 14 shed with a drawing. And the permit number 18, 1939 is for placing one four by six shed and one 10 by 14 shed. It's two sheds. Yeah, we'll get the same thing you're looking at. Yeah, we'll get the That's the permit. Is that in your packet? Yes, yes. Okay. yes it is. It's in the, the first thing, per application, okay. appeal application, which also includes the homeowner's applications and the drawings. So he made two applications for two sheds. And the permit allows both the sheds, but it makes a finding that there's no commercial agricultural use because he, he orders no commercial agricultural use. So not only do the sheds enable an agricultural use because that's their purpose, but the, uh, the permit also orders that there are no commercial operations, but there were, are, and will be unless this board takes action. So everything that we're speaking about today is relevant to this board's jurisdiction. Again, it has to do with the, the sheds being built. What they use for commercial-wise or any other doesn't pertain to the Board of Appeals. We're here to figure out if the setbacks are met and the criteria for the sheds are met. And, uh, and that's where we'll get the Ken Paul. But like I said, anything else? We don't we don't have anything to do with animals or manure or anything like that. That's not our job. You do because the CEO issued a permit making well, a finding. And your jurisdiction is is um, when there is a complaint against a written decision of the of the CEO, and the CEO made a finding of no commercial use, but there is commercial agricultural use. 
I, so what do you, what do you say, commercial? commercial? What do you, what do you, what are you buying as far as commercial? Does he have a store there? Does he sell out of his house or something? No, or? no, no. He has goats and chickens and sells um, meat, milk, and eggs. And in your packet, we have numerous um, evidence of his sales. The definition under the ordinance of agriculture. Does he advertise is, at, his, at his house on the street? Does he have a sign? No, he would not be allowed to. Okay, so they just sell them to friends or? I don't know to whom he sells, but he has commercial advertising. All right, so it's you're getting, you're getting the agric agricultural part of this, correct? That's yes, yes. Okay. So the definition so of the agriculture. Set, setbacks, are, there, are you looking at the setbacks of the goats? Are they walking down to the water? Yeah, the barnyard it, in, um, impedes on the setbacks. Yeah, absolutely. It's within a 100 foot setback. The the goats 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 barnyard, out yeah. Yeah. And the storage of manure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, and, the, and the barnyard is well within multiple setback violations. Yes. Well, that's, that's what we'll find out. All right, so it's basically just, it's, uh, that's all fine. Danny and I understand what you're talking about, but this is about the sheds. Yeah, so we need to focus on I mean, what they do with the sheds. We don't we control what people do with sheds when they build them on their property. Again, uh, that's something else that the code enforcement officer or, or somebody of other uh, agencies would get involved with, whether it be animals or anything else. Right. Uh, again, we're strictly on the shed part of it. Right. And, and like you said, you let me know about the setbacks and what you found out on that, and, and then we can go from there on that. Yeah. You know, but the other agencies would have to handle anything about animals or commercial or anything else. We don't we don't get involved with commercial stuff. So okay. if we can get involved into the uh, the shed and the setbacks and all that, that's what we need to hear about. No, absolutely, absolutely. But I, I'd like to just um, put on the record that um, our belief is that it is within your jurisdiction to um, hear and decide on any violation of the ordinance that was made by the CEO, and that includes use. And but this, is not, appeal again, includes this use. is not an appeal of use. This right. is an appeal of a building right. permit. Right, right, which allows a certain use. Well, okay, let's okay, get to the side. Yeah, it doesn't matter these whole yeah. right. stories, so shovels, fine. tractors. Right. right. It doesn't matter. Right. We, we just want to talk about the structures. Okay. Yeah. Well, we I, I understand you're saying about the goats and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's in there. All right. Mm -hmm. But that's, well, a whole separate, that's a whole separate thing. All right. The record, and it's in your packet, is evidence of ongoing commercial operations. But you can also move into your packet, and you will see um, a, set, a, a document labeled setbacks. Mm hmm. Oh, you have so much stuff here. I know, I need, I need a giant desk. Hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Now, it's our understanding that the CEO never went to the property and never made any measurements. Um, <clears throat> the homeowner did um, supply a rough sketch of his application, but the sheds are not where they're indicated on his application. Mm -hmm. The sheds have actually been moved a few times. Um, but this is our sketch of the setbacks, which shows where the six by four shed had been, where the six by four shed was moved to, where the 10 by 14 shed is. The location of our dug well and then you can see on his application materials too, he has a well about here, which is also, as I'll inform you, too close to his barnyard. So in this um, shoreland zone, um, you need a 100 foot setback for any structure from the water. Mm -hmm. He was not within the 100 foot setback when the permit was issued. He was not within the 100 foot setback during the time period which he had to change until that November 3rd time period that the CEO gave him to, to change. He did move it up subsequently around November the 17th. However, that looks like it infringes on um, the 10 foot setback mm -hmm. to our proper, to um, the neighboring property line. I believe this is Mr. Spencer White's property line. Um, and he's here to speak to you as well. Okay. What page on what document are you in? Are you still in the first appeal application? No, I'm towards the back in the setbacks document. Somewhat in the middle of that package. Can you? Yeah. 
and it's not one in my package. It's only two pages. Do you want to look at it? This also is a, is a non-conforming lot in the shoreland zone. Um, and if you have um, non-conforming lots, um, there, uh, there is an additional uh, provision in the ordinance where you can't meet certain setbacks. Um, there is an allowance for structures in section 5.1.1, .1, um, but those structures need to be on the road side of the um, primary house. They can only be for tool sheds, um, and they can not be any closer to the lake than the house. So we're, we have violations of the 100-foot setback here, which he's moved, violations of the 10-foot setback here, and violations of the non-conforming lot setbacks. Now, I'm sorry, on the side uh, lot where the shed was built, how far from the edge did you say it was? He's right up on it. Huh? Right up on it. Right we've up got on? pictures of the shed up against the fence as well, right up on it. Oh, there's a fence there, so yep. the shed yep. next to it. Yeah, so you can see on this drawing, this, the 10 foot setback is approximately this dotted line, and the shed is well within that 10 foot setback. It directly abuts the property line. Is that the big shed or the small one? That's the small one. Okay. Okay, so you have all of those setbacks. You also have a retaining wall, or, or sorry, you have a, um, yes, you have a retaining wall setback for, um, where am I? Yep, for for um, for retaining walls and fences, and we have photographs of, in here of his retaining wall as well. And those retaining walls need to be um, 25 feet horizontal distance from the shoreland um, line, and the total wall can be no more than 24 inches. And here we have oh, it's a six seven foot chain link. Um, collecting dirt and um, soil and manure and other waste um, retaining in the barnyard well within those setbacks. This you can see the outline of the barnyard. I didn't write a permit for a retaining wall. We're, yeah, we're getting off the yeah, set I was going to say, it's a little bit off. Yeah. 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 Well, this, is the, this, is the, this is the entire barnyard, though. Yeah, well, again, stay with the sheds. Yeah, OK. Again, OK. Please. <coughs> well, I'd just like to reiterate, the sheds enable the use. You would have no sheds if you didn't have goats in a barnyard. And these are all setbacks within the ordinance. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, sir. When did this individual acquire his first goat? We're unsure, but it's about 2014. 2014. At what point in time did the individual apply for permits to construct um, housing for goats. He applied in September of 2018, and it was after the fact permits for sheds that already exist. He had four sheds. But the permit he applied for was for the Two small sheds. sheds, right, and the 10 by 14 sheds. Correct. Right. But he had sheds prior to that, but we're talking about just these two, so. Correct. Okay. But these are not new. These are pre-existing. How long ago were they pre-existing? I don't know, but they are pre-existing. His permit, he checks the box. It's for pre-existing. Because if it's pre-existing. It's an after-the-fact permit application for, for sheds that are already existing. If it's pre-existing over 20 years, we don't have control of that either. I highly doubt it's 20 years. We got those in 2014. And at that time, I don't Again, know how we're long getting into property, so I don't know. That's yeah, we're getting into that with Ken okay. on that one uh, because that doesn't pertain to that time they didn't have those or whatever 20 years ago. So that's, yeah, it's the new factor here on since the permit was issued. Right. Now, was it just asking Ken? Was that shed built prior to the permit, or, or what? They were after the fact permits. And he purchased okay. the home in 2014. I'm sorry. He purchased the home. No. Did he purchase home within the last two months? Uh, okay, okay. No, we don't so know what he purchased. Okay, no problem. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> additional setbacks. <laughs> um, uh, the, there's a, this is, this, um, the sheds are within a livestock grazing area. 
that is also within um, the uh, the setbacks um, of section 5.2.5. Um, so an additional setback violation. Um, the sheds also um, um, allow um, for the um, housing of livestock within our well and within the landowner's well. That's in section 5.2.1. Um, the setbacks from resource concerns of a well need to be 100 feet or about 30 feet down gradient. That's not for a shed. You're talking about a shed? For, for, uh, for, um, for uh, spreading of manure. Again, it's just not a shed. We're talking about shed only. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. This yeah. is about sheds. Right. Just the sheds. That's the, the sheds house livestock that create waste. Today, okay. tomorrow could house something else. We're just yeah. talking about yeah. the actual structure. Right. Okay. Just okay. The structure. Well, let the record reflect that it's, okay. what, it's within the 100 foot setback for wells within livestock barnyards. Um, it's also within the um, main state um, setbacks for um, barnyards and barns themselves, which would be the shed, which the ordinance takes um, official notice of. Um, the main utilization maneuver gu guidelines for barns, such as the shed and barnyards, from water bodies is 300 feet. From private water supplies, such as ours, is 300 feet. Again, we're just 30 feet down gradient. Um, and this is why, you know, this is why on such small lots we don't allow these uses in these structures. Everyone's too close together. Um, you're going to have violations. You're going to have noise and odor and nuisance okay. and it's going to affect their neighbors again right these are these are for the i know structures. i know that there's, there's problems involved but again we're trying to stay with these two structures and right. the one the one is a storage shed and what's the other one uh the 10 by 14 has for use half of it's a run-in for the goats and the other half is storage okay but the small one is just strictly storage is that correct? The small ones are running. four by six for storage. It's three walls. Okay. I'm sorry. Continue. So they're both for the goats? <coughs> no, just the one. She just said the small one is the running for the goats, and the big one is half for the goats and half for storage. Um, the small one is for? Is a three wall front end. It's, it's only got three walls to it? The fronts, we don't have a front on it, so they can get up underneath it. Oh, so just a four by six shed, right? So we yeah. Okay. Those are the setbacks, and I'd just like the record to reflect that um, we also have evidence of um, groundwater and surface water contamination, which is um, obviously one of our primary concerns, having our dug well well within um, the 100 to 300 foot setback set forth in local and state law um, from these barns, from these sheds, which house animals, which house livestock for agricultural operations. Um, and there is um, ample evidence of, of um, those uses. Um, and the CEO also made a determination um, in prior meetings that the town's um, uh, good neighbor uh, and standard design um, provisions do not apply. We are appealing that decision as well. Um, Got to stay with the shed. Okay. Okay. All these others are, okay. Yeah. Please. Well, the sheds, um, the sheds um, um, are not um, adequately buffered underneath those um, those design standards. Um, there's um, a, a buffering that needs to require a year-round um, um, buffering, and there is none. The sheds directly abut the property lines, um, so we're in violation of, of those provisions as well. The permit. Um, Can she cite these sections? She's going all over the board. When I have to reply. Sure, 5.11.2. So you're in agricultural, and if you look at the definition of agricultural, that's definitely under commercial use. Right, which this is. Yeah, well, we, yeah, we, we, we just can't determine that. You know, I, know. I, I disagree. I did believe that you can determine that, that, that state law, um, it's very clear. Again, they have ordinances, like you say, for that, which other departments can intervene on. Uh, like right. you say, if it's commercial selling or whatever. But again, Board of Appeals, we're here to make sure that this, these sheds are regulated. And that's it. You know, like I said, right. a lot of this involves other agencies, not the Board of Appeals. So. Right. 
Well, I, I would, I would I, encourage you to point me to the other agencies because the well, ordinance is very clear that the, this board hears appeals of use and structures. Right. I can point you to the This appeal was not filed as an appeal of use. This appeal was filed as a building permit appeal right. issuance. Which allows okay? the use, right. Strictly for the building permits. Yep. Okay? I'm not arguing that, you know, the goats are a problem. Mm -hmm. I agree that, you know, I probably wouldn't want to live next door, but that's neither here nor there. Okay? You filed an appeal mm -hmm. against the building permits. If you have an appeal that you don't like the usage of the particular property, then you need to attack it from that standpoint, not from the building permit standpoint. All right. Which was um, not in my mind. Right, right. No, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, two points. We didn't even have the building permit when we were required to file our appeal within that 30 day period. Uh, the town didn't give it to us until, I believe, November the 1st after we had to file a Freedom of Access Act request. Um, so we, we knew that we were appealing um, what was going on next door, but had no idea what the particulars of the building permit were. Um, and the building permit does contain usage provisions, right? So it allows the sheds, that's the first line, and then there are 13 conditions. There's no evidence that these conditions ever have been met or ever will be met. Um, for example, seasonal use only, number eight. That's usage, that's use. And this is year-round agricultural use. There's no way that that condition can be met how else are we to appeal that if not to this board? It's a, it's a condition number eight on, on a building permit. Right. And uh, that's something that Ken Paul would, as a whole enforcement, would have to entertain uh, the Board of Appeals on that. You know what I mean? If, I, I do if they're doing something illegal or improper on their property, that doesn't have to do with the Board of Appeals. Right. Again, uh, we're trying to restrict it just to those two sheds, and, right. and uh, we and, got and that point across on the two sheds. Or... Yes, you, you did, and, you, and they are doing something illegal. That's why we have the notice of violation, which was issued by the land use department by Mr. Paul, um, signed by Brenda Charlin. Here's your notice of violation, the illegal mm -hmm. use. Okay, and then the, per the permit was issued after the, the CEO's determination that, that, that this had been satisfied. But this has not been satisfied, so the building permit is is unlawful. Well, we'll find, you know, we're here at his side too, and, and see what he's got to say on that part. It's been noted. Okay, yep. thank you. Um, I'd just like to note a couple of other uh, conditions on the permit. Um, again, they're in our packet, but um, there's no evidence that, that um, the link code has been met. Um, the Shoreland District step setbacks are not met. Um, there is change in existing grade. You'll see photographs in our package showing a piling up behind that retaining wall, um, which apparently is an unpermitted retaining wall. Um, there is evidence of excavation and soil erosion. This is a soil erosion protection zone. Um, there, uh, these are um, what the homeowners have characterized as pets. So there's no way they can do seasonal yeah. use. No. I know I'm, I'm appealing yeah. the permit, so I'd like to just let the record state everything I have um, taken issue with this permit. But it doesn't. That doesn't make the building permits illegal. What's being done with them maybe might be illegal, uh, but that doesn't have anything to do with building the permits in the location. Yes. What we're trying to yes. No, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I just want to let the record show that there's no evidence that any of this has been met or will be met. Um, uh, there's also um, no evidence that the CEO or his office has ever gone out and taken measurements um, at an October 18 um, meeting. Um, um, so that Ms. Charland made statements that they had not taken measurements. So how can you um, ensure that you've met the setbacks if you don't if, if the, the planning department's yeah. never taken? measurements um uh we were under the um we were told that the homeowner would have until november 3rd to come into compliance with the building permit there's no evidence of inspections to ensure compliance after that point no written decision of the ceo showing compliance um, the ordinance also requires um, an inspection and an occupancy permit um, there's no evidence that we see an, an occupancy permit, permit for a shed 
for structures under the ordinance. Yes. For yep. storage sheds, or sheds in general. Okay. Um, well, there are a number of neighbors here who also want to speak to you about okay. the sheds. Yep. Um, and I invite them to speak now. Um, a few neighbors were unable to join. Um, so uh, the town told us to submit to you their comments. Now, are these abutting neighbors? To the property, or or, or just the where are the neighbors located? In other words, are they buttoned up to the property, or are they yeah, a block away, the or two blocks away, or yep. what's that? I, my understanding is they're abutting there across the street, which the across definition the of street abutting. Uh, Thirteenth is that Thirteenth Street? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they're street. across Thirteenth Street. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Part of this particular plot of land extends across. 13th Street. Yeah, just a little bit of a narrow edge of it. And abutting includes neighbors across the street. Uh, did everybody sign in while we're all here? Everybody mm -hmm. signed the sheet. Please sign the sheet there before you yeah. speak. If you uh, have anything to say, we can make sure you're all signed in. Thank you. You. Now this is from neighbors. one neighbor, two neighbors, how many neighbors are we talking about? Huh? A bunch of neighbors. Uh, they're all butters. These are... No, they can't all be a butter. I was going to say, they can't no. be four oh, butters. Some are... Uh, four butters. I'm sorry. Four 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 four. Oh. They put their addresses, but I can't tell you who's a butting and who's okay. not a butting. Oh, why is she saying now? Is there anybody here that wants to? So I'll, I'll read your since 784 13. Uh, just give me your name. Spencer White. Spencer White. All right. Okay. And you live where? 784 13 Street. But as someone mentioned, the land goes from both sides of 13th Street, so I am a direct about it. Okay. Okay. So uh, I wrote this, and you can pull out of it what you want, but uh, I'm Spencer White. My family have owned the property at 784 13th in the back lot adjacent to the goat farm for 90 plus years. We have come to love this peaceful countryside, lakeside setting, and have been neighbors and good friends to the Whites, who's the uh, Sweeney's grandparents and the Sweeney's for all of my 72 years. Our children and their children and grandchildren still have frequent get-togethers throughout the year. And these are good times and, and uh, has been a wonderful neighborhood in which to raise our families. We enjoyed the simple pleasures of life and our surroundings. This all changed with the arrival of the goats and the once pine-filled aroma of the country has been replaced with the stench of goat urine and manure. Excuse me, it's getting off on topic of sheds. Do you have anything to say pertaining to the okay. sheds? So, so, so again, the sheds, the sheds are filled with goats. I question anything else being stored in them. And the three-sided shed is covered with a shield of cloth on the front. So that may make it a four-sided structure. I don't know. Okay. I don't know where the the sheds are. They were on my property uh, by a good number of feet. He has moved them over. Uh, I had the lot line surveyed. Uh, he removed the stakes from the property. So I don't know where they are at this point in time. But they're not on your property. I, I, you can't tell. I don't know. You can't tell where the sheds are? You, you can't tell where the property line is. The stakes are gone now. Okay. I'm assuming that one of them still is dead on the property line, uh, but uh, he's received a letter to put the stakes back in. So far that hasn't happened. Uh, and uh, so how you can issue a permit and not know where the the uh, stakes where the shed property line is, I don't know. Okay. So that's, Thank you. that's it. 
Yeah. Anybody else? Nope. Uh, would the owners want to say anything? Or again, it doesn't really bore on him, uh, code enforcement officer. But just the uh, and we have anything to say about the sheds specifically? We're just talking about the sheds and where they're located and everything else. Okay. No. So the locations where they're at now is that where you plan on keeping them? Is that the? Oh, we have to call. No, no, because you, that's you have moved them. So. I have you moved, moved them off of Mr. White's line, and I moved them with the proper setbacks, and that's where I plan on keeping them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all set here. We will then go to the code enforcement officer and, and uh, hear what he has to say on this. So they were saying there's uh, violations of the setback. Somebody mentioned they have a survey. I haven't seen a copy of the survey. Uh, it meets the 100 foot setbacks. Sideline setbacks, I don't measure sideline setbacks. I'm not a surveyor. So if I go out and there's two stakes in the ground, it's an old horseshoe pit. I don't know what it is. Uh, if somebody's building a house, we're going to require a certified plot plan. A survey is going to give us a document, and we're going to have it on these small lots. I don't require it for a shed because if there is an issue, usually when you go to sell the house or refinance, you're going to do a uh, survey through the finance company. If there's an issue, you just look at chain move it or something like that. I, well, I don't impede people to give me certified plot plans for movable sheds. Um, the goats, I've been out there multiple times. I've heard I've never been out there tonight a couple of times. We've been out there several times. Um, the goats last I had was uh, down to six and I think no chickens now. Or so, so it's been reduced dramatically. They keep talking about this commercial operation. They give you a lot of information from back in October. We're in December. Um, from what I gather, the websites have all been taken down. These no. are just generally stuff. So. For, our, for when I look at a, 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 a issue, a violation or something, I have to picture myself in front of the court judge in, in trying to get this through. For me to bring somebody in that has commercial operations that I can't prove is going to be very, very difficult. And it's going to be, obviously, the taxpayers are paying for my attorney to bring this through court and stuff like that. It would be almost impossible for me to bring somebody in because it's that day when I'm in court that they're in violation. I usually go by that day and see we're still in violation and, and see there's actually a sign and somebody's bought and stuff from them and I have receipts and things like that. So the commercial operation is going to be very, very tough to prove that it is actually going on and it is happening. Um, the 5.2, when they were into that section of the ordinance, uh, the agricultural, again, that's for the commercial <coughs> section, same as the good neighbor policy as well. Uh, and that's going to be their groundwater and stuff. Early on, when this first complaint came in, um, they didn't get a response from me. So DEP and Department of Agriculture will both went out there and sent you an email saying that there were no issues out there. DEP and Department of Agriculture said that uh, the low water in the cove was some of the reason the fish were dying back then in August 10th, 2018. Um, so when the DEP and Department of Agriculture are telling me that there isn't a water quality issue coming from this barnyard, for us to invest a lot of time to go out there and focus on this makes it very difficult for us on that. Uh, the seasonal use only, that was a typo on the permit. That was our mistake at the office. That condition shouldn't have been in there. Um, the building code, so once we issue a permit, you have a year to start and a second year to finish. The permit's good for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, when they're ready, they'll call for a final inspection. We'll go out and take a look at it at that time. So that hasn't been done yet? No. No, no permit's still good. He's still got another no, a year and 10 months or so on the permit. Right now on the setbacks, how are you on the setbacks here? Uh, he's no, well away from the 100 foot mark. The sideline, I believe there was some contention, so where the sideline setback is, Mm -hmm. um, you'd need a survey for it. According to the abutter, he had one, but now there's no stakes. The stakes were pulled by Colton. I don't well, know that, so, yeah. and, and, and I, I couldn't I imagine a letter being sent to somebody to go put property line stakes in the ground. 
That means no. Uh, you have to be a survey to put those back in the ground. No, you just can't go through right, stakes right. in the ground. Can, can, can I comment on that? Um, yes, sir. No violations. Uh, we did issue. They came into compliance uh, as soon as we sent the letter out. They called us immediately. I think they actually came in before the letter went out um, to work with us. They've been really good to work with as far as violators go. They've been good on that measurement there. So. Um, does the board have any questions? Several. Yeah. Who, who contacted the VEP? You? No, that would have been uh, probably Bill Gannon. One of the about us down there. Okay. there. And then the department actually uh, went up there and inspected. Yeah, they've been up there before too and found the same thing a few years ago. So what they're saying is there's no there's nothing's coming from the, the goats as far as there's a very good them. vegetated buffer between the barnyard area and the lake itself it is downhill but it is a vegetated buffer there's no goat paths going down to the water no and they can't get down to the water at all are they a hundred feet restrict uh, restrained a hundred feet away from the water the goats and all that or do they that's have all chain link fence they don't run the fence okay and unless we melt them and then they go underneath we have a a second floor deck, which is still yeah, it's not near the water. Feet. In other words, at all. No. Okay. And they're in a chain link thing around the the shed, shed, yep. so both they, sheds or one or two oh. sheds, both sheds. Not uh, fence ten. Master, she can. Shed right. So I do I do both dispose of your manure. Goes to the dump. Goes to the dump. I'm just curious. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but it goes to the dump. Stored in the trailer. Still, yeah. Put it in your trailer. Four by eight trailer it goes from a wheelbarrow to the trailer, and then goes to the dump. Anything now? How's the? Uh, they brought up the subject of wells. Do we have any inkling on that? I don't have a local ordinance to tell me on how far an animal can be from a well. I have septic system well setbacks for a new septic system. We'd be looking at that. But there are not. provisions in the local ordinance. On I'm wells. sorry. There are provisions in the local ordinance on wells. Under the Absolutely. agricultural commercial aspect. Right. Which so how can you determine different. what setbacks to look at if you don't know what what usage you're within? Not, that, that's our yeah, point. Yeah, but you can't supposition that it's commercial when it might be just residential. In right. Other, that, that's you can't what say we it's definitely you. one thing and not the other. That's yeah. why we gave you evidence of commercial use. So we're within a totally different range of setbacks because it is absolutely an agricultural use. There, there are multiple photographs of, um, they, their Facebook page has business hours. Um, they're, they're on a, um, a, they're members of a um, goat industry um, well, that, organization. That, it doesn't matter what well, they're members of, they can be members of anything. Right, but what I'm saying is that, that we have a, a, new, a multitude of evidence of, of agricultural use, and that defines what setbacks you look at. And so you need to make That's a usage surprising. determination to know what setbacks you're even looking at. And once you get into that range, that, that's when we're well within our well, which also the DEP and the Department of Ag did not know where our well was when they came out and made their inspections. That's when you get into groundwater and surface water issues. Because, because the setbacks are set by what the use is. Well, if the it's state, just a residential use, it's separate. It has to be at least 100 feet that's, that's in stone from the water. You know, nothing could be closer than, than 100 feet. So, right. what happened after 100 encroaches. feet? You know, you can have horses and whatever else they want. Well, the barnyard encroaches on that 100 foot. The barnyard or the uh, shed? The barnyard, right? The shed, the structure. Which no, the barnyard. The sheds, the sheds encroach on the um, property line setbacks. <clears throat> the barnyard encroaches on the 100 foot setback. But that's 100 percent within your jurisdiction because we're talking about yes. setbacks, and we know what setbacks we're talking that's about because we look at the use right. first. And, and that's also the well setback, no, too. Just, what, okay, Ron, my understanding is the shed is past 100 foot mark. The shed is past 100 okay, foot mark. Okay, stop there. Yes. Okay, what you're saying is the barnyard, so the fenced area, Correct. is within 100 feet. Correct. Okay. And there's also but evidence. That's not a structure. The fence, I don't know if it's a structure or not. That's not a structure. Right. Some towns are talking about the shed being 100 feet in the water. Not, any right. fences but or I'm talking about on that. setbacks, right? And so you have the, the, the sheds are well within 300 feet of the wells. Somebody's phone ringing. And you don't know what setbacks oh. you're looking at until you know what use you're looking at. And we've got we've got sheds housing livestock 
within within a hundred feet, within thirty feet of barnyard use. Again, we're going okay. We're going and then so. I just like to comment on one other um, point that was made. There's also photographs from their Facebook page showing the goats being free range down on the water. <coughs> So we've included that in our packets. So the goats do go down to the water. That, that was years ago. <laughs> Question? <laughs> Mr. Paul, this particular piece of land that is in question, what is the zoning of that particular piece of land? Shoreland zone. Shoreland zone residential, shoreland zone farm, shoreland zone agricultural, can we be more specific? Uh, the zone for the town, the zoning ordinance would pick that up as shoreland zoning. It's just strictly shoreland zoning. Yeah. Is there any restriction on a landowner from owning goats? Do you have anything at all? Do I have to come to you for a permit to keep goats, to keep cows, to keep pigs? Mm -hmm. There is in the land use table kennels and animal care facility. That doesn't cover goats, no. No. cows, pigs, which are all livestock. So originally when this first came in, first thing I did was call the DEP Shoreland Zoning yep. to help me navigate this through. And as soon as I was reading our <coughs> section and uh, it talked, as soon as it said commercial, he said stop right there. It isn't a commercial use. It doesn't apply in this situation. Okay. Point of order as far as, you know, yeah. whether something exists or doesn't exist. As of yesterday, uh, you can still go online and look on the web and see Cove Edge Goats. That doesn't make them a commercial outfit. It's just a website. Okay? It's still there. Are they selling goats? I don't know. Do your goats have kids? Yes. What do you do with them after you have them? Give them away? Sell them? I don't know. No. We're not here to discuss that. This meeting was supposed to be about the sheds. I didn't know that there were two until we were appraised of the second yeah, building permit request. We only had notice of one. Okay. As far as the sheds are concerned, were they constructed properly? I don't know. Are they located where they have to be? Again, I don't know that for sure. We have not taken a site walk. So, you know, these things have to be done. As far as the rest of the complaints are concerned, I don't think that this particular appeal covers your complaints okay I understand what your complaints are I've read your 13 page supplement I know all of the stuff that's in there I've been down to the property on the road I have not walked onto his property your property or anybody else's property at this particular time of the year It'd be very difficult for you to smell very much of anything other than cold. I'm not saying that there isn't some smell. Manure does smell. I live probably There's within uh, a thousand yards of a farm. He has horses, uh, no horses. He has cows, he has pigs, he had goats. Uh, he has free range chickens. Do I smell them? Eh, I don't think so. But I'm not going to debate that point because that's not what we're here for tonight. We were here to discuss the building permits for the sheds. The rest of it is all external. I understand that the sheds, you know, give him some place to keep his goats, and that the goats are really the problem. But that's not for us to decide. I understand. If you know, if you think that the uh, CEO has violated Acton's ordinances as far as zoning is concerned. It would be under land usage, okay? Not the building permits for the sheds. 
And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion at this particular time that we deny this appeal based on the fact that he applied for the permits for the sheds, possibly after the fact, but all of the rest of this stuff is external to the permits for the sheds. I'm not saying there aren't issues that, you know, need to be addressed, but as far as this particular hearing is concerned, it's just about the permits for the sheds. Yeah. Right, let me uh, finish up and then we'll, we'll take a motion. Uh, just a question, when you built these sheds, did you have any side markers that you measured from on your neighbor's property when you built the sheds that you were 10 feet or 20 When feet? I originally built them, I was going by, uh, I had a contract to build a house four years ago. And he cleared all the land. So I just went by, okay, if the contract cleared the land, then it must be mine because it was all woods. So I put them where I thought my property was. And do we know it is or not? Or never got surveyed or find out? Oh, no, it, it was totally surveyed when the, my contract was put in for the, um, for the building permit for the, the house. For your house. And I've since moved them considerably away from where he thinks the line is. I even did that even further away so I wouldn't have to move them again because it was really a pain. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. Can I ask Ken a follow-up question? Sure. Kenny, uh, they were talking about nobody got down there to measure the, from the shore up. Did you guys actually physically measure? No. Um, the reason I didn't measure off right off the bat is Mr. Sweeney just built a house there was a pre-existing house down by the water. They demoed and built one back. The one they built back was beyond the 100-foot mark, mm -hmm. and I could tell from the shed distances. So prior to this meeting, we went down there. We hooked on with a 100-foot tape measure. Yep. We went down to the shoreline. We never made it to the shoreline before we ran out of 100-foot tape measure. So they exceed the 100-foot setback. Okay, that was because that seemed to be one of the issues that they didn't. They were too close. And that I would be a different appeal right. that, that it's right. a shed violation, not right. the shed themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to make sure that you did go down the physical yep. measure. Thank you. All right, so at this stage, yes. So, again, I don't know how, I had the property staked off, spent several thousand dollars, and then more money to get it reserved. It, uh, it, I'm not paying for the reserving, but the were stakes put in down that property line, verified by hard points that even Colton's family agreed with the points. Uh, there's hard points in the land. The stakes were there. They were removed. They're not there anymore. Were the sheds moved away from? The sheds were moved, but how do you know where they were moved to? Well, yeah, but I mean, we can't supposition that he moved the stakes or I it. saw him move the stakes. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow. So that's, again, that has nothing, okay, nothing to do. I know, right? Okay. I mean, so that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But I don't know how you can issue a permit without a defining a lot line. I paid to have it defined. It was there. Okay. It was clearly the lot line clearly ran through the shed before he moved. <coughs> I have. He's moved them now. I agree. Yeah. Okay, I don't really care, but but the fact that the lot line that's a, an illegal exercise to remove. So we'll let that go. Right. Okay. Right. 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 No, I guess it was you that raised your hand. Yeah, I said a PT. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no other comments then? We will close this meeting to the public. Is anybody oh. from the neighbors of others contacted DEP or the Department of Agriculture? Nobody? Yeah, yeah. We contacted them. You, you have? Yes. Did they, did they do the slight walk on it? Uh, they've, not to no, their house. No, no, not to their house. And they did not know the location of our well when they made their letter to the CEO or whatever he was referring to. Um, and we also um, have done surface water tests that are in the packet showing increased contamination. From, I mean, it was a scientific proof that came from the building? No. From Boris, it's just 
It's, it's a water test. It's a water and it was, water. it was the E. coli is twice the standard accepted and there's no cause cited as to why the E. coli is so high. I've read that as well. Any other questions that we want to ask anybody before we close? Hi, I the do. Yes, go ahead. On our drawing we have here, is the small shed on the house side or on the other side? They're both on the left side. Both. Well, no, he said two sheds. They're somewhat connected, but on the map here, it's the big ones, and then the small one is on the outside of the perimeter, yes. or in the what they're calling in the zone. Zone. But in the in the picture, it looks like it's on the other side that the small shed is connected to the driveway side. Mm -hmm. I can't find the picture. Here, take a look at those. That's the one, and then that shows the other shed on the other page there. Oh, see, and check the other page, it's the other one. Any other members have anything to ask of the members, the audience, mm -hmm. or whatever? If not, we're going to close this meeting to the public and uh, be up to discussion with us. If there's no discussion on us, then we can get to a motion. Any discussion or questions? Any further? If you guys want to ask anybody? No? Anybody at this end? I will entertain a motion now. I make a motion that we deny this appeal because it does not meet the requirements. This was, for, deal. this was for the building permits of the shed. It is nothing to do, as far as I'm concerned, it has absolutely nothing to do with what's in the sheds. If you want to cite uh, zoning ordinances that are in violation, then don't attack the building permit. Attack what the violations are. So there we'll name again. My motion is to deny this appeal. Everybody hear that? Motion to deny the appeal. Everybody understand that? Yes. All members accept the alternates and vote. Yes or no? All in favor of the motion? Was that a second? Um, it hasn't been a second. Second. Yeah, second. Um, so the five members here, all in favor of denying, raise your hand. All opposed? Opposed? No, opposed. Yeah. One opposal. So out of five members, if one uh, uh, denies it, it still passes. We need four out of five members to uh, vote for it, and we voted to deny the uh, appeal. Now that's uh, not to say that you can't submit another appeal. Just so thank you. Just don't thank you for your do it against your advice. Okay. Cite exactly what you want to say, thank you. and you have. Uh, you can just to let you know, you, you can appeal it to the Superior Court within 45 days of this, which I have motion, so you. it's up to the lawyer. And thank you very much, and I hope you guys have a good evening to Capital and Home. Okay, thank you, everybody.